Well, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you one more time. Rev Andy here. What? What? What's that? What are y'all so angry about? What's all the booing about? What? Oh, <laughs> you heard about our meeting of some uh, other church folks when we were out last night, Bert and Antonio and the kids. We were handing out flyers. You must have heard about that. We'll get into that in a minute, all right? Rev Eddie here. There you are. Where's my warriors? Come on. If you're a warrior for Jesus, let me hear you shout. Yay! Hallelujah! We are just so thankful for today. So thankful that the Lord woke us up one more again. <laughs> Amen? Woke us up. Preserved us through the night. Woke us up. And then, not only that, he woke us up in our right mind with all our faculties and in perfect health. Another beautiful, gorgeous, magnificent day passed to Tim to do his work, his will, his way. Am I right, Tim? Oh, you're right, Rev. God bless everybody, and I'm just grateful for, like you said, another day to wake up and praise him. Yeah, be that warrior for him. Another chance to gear up, war up, get our war clothes on and get out here on this battlefield for souls. Amen. Another day to see his miraculous hand, his mighty hand move in our lives, our circumstances, our situations, our bodies. Amen. Miracle. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A shout out to all of you following on YouTube, our, 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 favorite YouTubers, and all of you in our Facebook family, friends, relatives, and loved ones, we just want to say thank you. God bless you. We're here for you. Oh, know that in your heart. We are here for you and only you. Amen. <laughs> but watch this. Wasn't Tim, wasn't that a powerful, powerful interview with uh, S.B. Tone Bararian Amen. yesterday? Wow. Amen. And then we went out and got to work afterward. After that podcast, he never hung up. I had 14 million <laughs> things to do, but I had to get out there and meet Bird at the community center so we could get to this uh, these projects to hand out these. We have an event, y'all, on the 30th, Saturday. Last Saturday of the month, we have an event. Free hamburgers, hot dogs, drinks, uh the commission's going to be there. They're going to be bringing that gospel rap and uh, dancing uh, to bring glory to God. There's going to be many ministers and ministries there, testimonies, preaching. We're just going to go out and be a blessing and pray. Pray with folks. They might have a particular situation that they need prayer for. We are going to be there for them. Amen. And so... We had to go out and hand out flyers. Do you know, me and Tom, was, we stayed on the phone after the podcast. Of course, we were on during the podcast. But we talked until I got to Bert's house, and he pulled up right behind me. Amen. So it was just a blessed day with uh, uh, Antonio yesterday. And y'all keep that young warrior lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Anyway, if you're on YouTube, and you'd like to reach out to me personally, maybe you'd like some personal prayer, or you just want to ask a question or share something, or uh, uh, whatever's on your heart, I'm here for you. Come over to Facebook. Search Rev. Eddie Wiggins. Amen? Now, on Facebook, Rev. Eddie is one word. No space, no dash, no dots, no periods. Just Rev. Eddie Wiggins. Message me, and we'll exchange phone numbers. And we can talk it out, chat it out, cry it out, shout it out, pray it out, knowing all the while that God, our almighty God, is going to work it out. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. A shout out, Tim. You know where I'm going to our favorite island, 
in the whole Amen. wide world. That big old island of Mindanao in the Philippines and all of the beautiful people there are favorite DJs, Joe Ryan and Woody Boy. And that mighty, 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 mighty radio station they're operating, the Mighty Mix FM 90.1 on your FM radio dial. Y'all, keep that radio station and Joe Ryan and Woody Boy lifted up in your prayers. Amen. God is going to use them in, in an even more powerful way, amen, to reach the ears and hearts and minds and souls and spirits of all those over there in Dipalog City, Dipaton City, Barangay, uh, Palanco, Districts 1, 2, and 3, and more in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And pray for Pastor Nelia. She reached out yesterday. Uh, I think she talked to you, Tim. Amen. And I've heard from Amen. her in the last couple of days. She's pounding that island from Dipalog City all the way up into those mountains. Amen. And she has needs again right now. Amen. Uh, a thousand dollars should fill all their needs. Uh, they need windows and doors. Uh, I guess they got mattresses and stuff like that for the kids. Amen. Uh, but they need school supplies Amen. for the kids. So if you're over there, reach out to Joe Ryan, reach out to us, reach out to Pastor Nelia. Amen. And let's get her all the pencils and notebooks and backpacks and papers and all the things that those kids need to continue their education. Amen. All right. Keep Charlotte and Dale and Murray lifted up in your prayers in beautiful downtown. Australia, amen, as they are just on fire, sharing uh, sharing the word of God with all with all who will listen over there. Keep Samanga over in Zambia, Africa, lifted up in your prayers, along with Minister Deborah Atwell down on that island of Trinidad, and that on fire ministry the Lord lit up over there looking for the lost, saving souls in Jesus' name, amen. Keep Anna and Morgan and Jacob and Maddie and Chris and Micah all down under lifted up in our prayers along with Nick and Patricia over in beautiful downtown Texas burning up them highways looking for the lost and all the men and women prisons and ministering to of the word of God in a powerful way. God has anointed this ministry, this healing through this ministry, deliverance through this ministry once the lost are found and they come to the knowledge of Christ. It don't stop there. Nick and Patricia are going every day. Amen. Let's keep them lifted up in our prayers along with Pastor Mike and that beautiful, sweet deliverance ministry he has with uh, through the Victory Outreach, Fort Worth, Texas. Amen. And Pastor Joel, who serves under him, who has his own prison ministry with his wife. Amen. And they're burning up those roads in Texas every day, six days a week, ministering at the men and women's prison themselves. Amen. Keep my spiritual mentor, Coach Gecko, and his darling wife, Kay, and all his family, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in your prayers, as well as uh, Laura Bolin and Donna and her two sons and Harvey Carey and his wife Rosie, Anthony and Jamal on the beautiful downtown streets of Atlanta, Georgia, sharing this true gospel of Jesus Christ with all who will listen. Amen. Keep Elena Vasquez and her son Nelly Vasquez, her husband Pablo Vasquez, and all their family, relatives, and loved ones lifted up in our prayers along with my my good brother Rod, my brother in Christ, Rod, and Grandma Naomi. Hey, Grandma, we love you. Amen. Pray for Karen and Jan, my sisters, and my auntie Annette. Amen. And my niece, Elena. Keep them lifted up in your prayers, along with Sarah and Captain Haynes and their ministries. Uh, Minister Prophetess Mary Jo Mosley and her grandsons Jason and Cameron and Dorothy and her dad and her son Lee. Amen. Pastor Jody and her powerful ministry, Gail and Tex. Hallelujah. And especially 
their grandson, Mateo. And let's just pray right now that the Lord would keep his hand on Mateo. We're seeing the results of our prayers right now on Mateo's life. Amen. Let's keep him lifted up in prayers for complete healing, deliverance, and restoration in his body, heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Amen. Keep Keith and Cheyenne and Ty and Patience and her two children and Helena Gore lifted up in our prayers, along with Ashley and her family and daughter. And I mean, we've said it before, the demons are after her family, full force. Amen? And we just we just rebuke that right now in the mighty name of Jesus and ask that the Lord would enter into each one of her family's lives and they would fall in love with him and catch on fire for him. Amen? And a hedge of protection and a wall of fire around her daughter in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Hallelujah. And J. Clark, I don't know who won that one. J. Clark, amen, from YouTube. We thank God for you, J. Clark. And the kids just love you. We love you, too. Uh, keep Ladera and her entire family lifted up in your prayers, especially her miracle granddaughter. Amen. Keep Evangelist Tammy and her powerful ministry lifted up in your prayers and her miracle daughter. Amen. Keep Lucia and Sasha. Ah, kids love y'all. Y'all must be sending something to them. What they got? What is that over there? Fruit roll-up. Somebody sent them a case of fruit roll-ups, and they over there with sticky fingers and stuff all over their faces having a good time. Amen. We thank God for you, Lucia and Sasha. We're in it to win it with you. Praying for you constantly. Amen. Just buckle your seatbelt. Closer you get to Christ, the better the ride. Amen. And uh, keep uh, Lucia's brother John and her sister Martina lifted up in your prayers. April and her children. Let's keep praying for April. Amen. Her, Her children are Bradley and Emma and Kyle and Gracie. Keep her husband, John, lifted up in your prayers, along with her nana, Sandy, healed from cancer right now in the powerful, powerful name of Jesus. And her prayers that her entire family would catch on fire with Jesus and become those warriors in Jesus' precious and mighty name. They beat me, Tim. Keep Donna Love lifted up in (laughs) your prayers. Amen. And uh, her prayer is that the Lord would move her family into a home and that for her, her entire family to be saved, done, done, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Keep Jerry. Now, we got a praise report about Jerry. Jerry is excited at the program. Now, you know, this is not his first trip to a program. Amen. He would run away in just two or three days. He's loving it. He got a job working in the kitchen. Now, it gets him up at 3, 3.30 in the morning. But he loves serving. He loves working in the kitchen. This was a desirable job, and he got it walking into the program. Everybody would like to work in the kitchen. But look at God's hand on Jerry. And now he's got responsibilities. He's, he's looking to do good by everyone who's there, and he's pouring from himself. Look at God. Keep Jerry lifted up in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, I rolled with Bert yesterday, and we were looking for Nikki, and we couldn't find Nikki. Amen. We're praying God's hand is on Nikki, and he would shield and protect her wherever she's at. I'm praying she went into a program after she got saved. Amen. Amen. Keep Antonio lifted up in your prayers, along with our Jesse. Amen. Came in off of YouTube, but I mean, he is on fire for the Lord. We thank God for Jesse. And uh, pray hard for his family, especially his mother and uncle. Amen. Keep uh, Lene, our truth, truth and prayer warrior, lifted up in your prayers along with 
Nikki, amen, down under. Pray for Drina, who's really going through right now. She's watching and seeing things. She's prayed again. Amen. And so keep Drina lifted up in your prayer. She's just pouring her heart out in her work and in her ministry. And if you're in ministry, you know it's not always well received, but we keep going. Amen. And we pray for complete healing in Drina's body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Now, we got to pray harder for Brian, my boy Brian. Amen. I'm getting disappointed in what I'm hearing about Brian, and I want you to help me lift him up. I've known him for years. And what I'm seeing in the Brian I've fallen in love with but we go through struggles in this life. And that's why we pray for one another, lift one another, encourage and strengthen one another. Somebody starts to slip, you just move in there and lend a shoulder and lift them back up. Let's pray right now that Brian will get hit with the Holy Ghost right now and just turn on fire for the Lord. Get back into that word, strong and be all he can be for Christ in Jesus' precious and mighty name. DM Faith from YouTube. Prayer for it. Uh, salvation to hit their entire family in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Keep Bert's ministry lifted up in your prayers. Uh, he and his wife, Jennifer, and Trackside Ministries. Keep them lifted up in your prayers, along with his sister's, Lorelai and Sasha. Now, I don't know if Sasha listened today, but I saw a picture when you were young, Sasha, in your right mind. The Lord's going to make you even more beautiful as you roll with him now. A mighty warrior, Sasha, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Now, Lorelai, the Lord put in on her heart to come out with a clothing line. And guess what, y'all? It's like the artillery that we're wearing when we go out as the commission. The nice shirt, sweat shirt, got scripture or something on the front. Well, she's come out with her own line, and it's called Set Free. Ah! <laughs> Those that the Lord have set free, they are free indeed. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah! So she has a new line, and she uses the monies from this uh, uh, company to bless this ministry, to bless uh, Trackside, to bless the homeless. That's how I met Lorelai. Now, you've heard her testimony. We, we, we were blessed to have her testimony, a three-part series. Amen. But there was something about this girl. I don't even know that she's Bert's sister. I don't know who she is. We met in the parking lot and prayed. Then we drove around the corner into a homeless camp. And she in there praying with him. And hugging them. Oh, you act like she wasn't hugging them. I said she was <laughs> hugging them. Real love. And I'm looking at her like, I, you know, I had just moved up here. I, I don't know what, the, I don't know what Bert and them got going on. But I'm, I'm that warrior, so I'm out here with you. I'm seeing things that I've been looking for in other places that I've ministered come to life. This is a special, special warrior, Lorelai, for the Lord Jesus. Make sure you keep her and her baby sister, Sasha, lifted up in your prayers. Now, I've seen one of her first productions coming out. No, I'm not going to share it with you. It's that beautiful. It's that nice. And I'm praying to get me one. But, but if I show it to you, y'all might buy them all, and then I can get, let me get one first. When you're ready, let me know, and I'll show you some of the beautiful things she's designing for God's warriors. Now, this is warrior apparel. If you're not a warrior, don't be ordering this stuff. I'm just teasing y'all. Why y'all looking at me like that? Wow. Okay. But I'm not sharing it today, no, because I just got privy to it, and it's mine. Keep my boy John Fowler. Lift it up in your prayers, along with Dominique Moore and Billy Moore. Amen. 
and ES from YouTube and Scott Woodall and his donkey Rosie. Amen. And his lovely wife and beautiful sister. Let's keep them lifted up in our prayers. Amen. And Scott, you let me know, but I believe in the name of Jesus. The anxiety is gone from you in Jesus. Precious and mighty name. Amen. And we pray for complete healing for your wife and sister in their bodies. Heal from head to toe in Jesus' precious name and delivered in every area of their lives, hearts, minds, souls, and spirits on fire for the Lord with a Christ-like mind, a sound mind filled with love and power in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Amen. Let's pray for, let's see which list. I got so many lists to get through. Let's do Veronica and her family and situation, circumstances. Becca and her family, situation, circumstances. Michelle Bowman and her family, uh, uh, and situations and circumstances. They mean they need miracles big time, but we serve a miracle working God. And I can't think of anybody in this ministry that don't need a miracle right now. But these three are very dear to this ministry. I'm aware of their situations. Let's pray hard for Veronica, Becca, and Michelle. Amen. Keep Precious and Eric lifted up in your prayers. And our Thunder Twins, amen, they went out into a flood today. That Boston area, Massachusetts, got hit last night. I mean, towns were washed away, cars washed away. They're okay. But let's keep them lifted up in our prayers because uh, uh, Christine's out there driving around and spinning around and playing in the water now, amen, and got her sister in the car. So they're sending me jokes and all this stuff. I'm like, y'all be careful out there because sometimes what you think is a puddle, there's no street underneath. Let's keep them lifted up in our prayers. Total healing in their bodies from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And they're going through deliverance now and healing now. God is moving on their behalf. I can't wait to hear their testimony. And totally delivered in every area of their lives in Jesus, precious and mighty name. Now, I I need you all to pray for somebody special. Grandpa. Oh, Uh. (laughs) you trying to figure out who Grandpa is, huh? Tim. Tim's a grandpa. He going to be Grandpa, y'all. Keep Tim, his lovely wife, Heather, and his daughters, Jaylee and Haley, lifted up. In our prayers. Pray for them kids now. You know what the kids are going through all around this world. Keep keep his kids lifted up in your prayers. And let's just pray a special blessing over Haley. That this would be her divine moment. That as she, in her body, receives a miracle from heaven. That she will recognize what God is doing. And become dependent on God. Because I can just try to imagine a young mother watching their bodies change and something growing inside. Hallelujah. And their need for God to get through all this and then the delivery and then the raising of a child. When do we ever not need God? Amen. Let's just pray that uh, both her and Jaden will draw closer and closer to God through this miraculous experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Pray for Christina with a K down in beautiful downtown Mississippi. Christ in her heart and Christ in her name. Keep her son lifted up, her grandma, all her family, relatives, and loved ones, and every beautiful thing that God has put on his heart for Christina to do, amen. Pray for Giovanni, Sophia, our little 11-year-old girl, uh, diagnosed with something terrible in her body. Amen. Let's just pray right now that the Lord would touch Sophia, heal her body miraculously right now, totally incomplete, never to return in Jesus' precious and mighty name. 
Keep Paul down under, Maddie's mom, Tina, down under. Lift it up in your prayers, along with Nancy Bullock and Stephanie Deffer. Amen. Pray for Zara down under, Ali, her husband Ali and their children, Aran and Baran. Pray for Julie down under, Margaret down under, Tyler down under, Wang Wee In from Melbourne, Australia down under. Angelica Lewis, down under. Zarlia, down under. Maria and D David Rivers, along with Whitney and Sherry and their daughter. Amen. Pray for Laura from YouTube. Complete and total deliverance for her daughter, Micah, in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Pray for Jean from YouTube. Christine Starr, Robert Minnick, Ken. Amen. Ryan and Ekina from Houston, Texas. Apostle Stephen and his ministry in Nairobi, Kenya. Amen. Martin and Paris and Chester and Julie and Carly and John, Joshua, Jordan, and Mariano. Let's keep them all lifted up in our prayers. We got our new ones uh, today, y'all. Sienna. Let's lift Sienna up in our prayers before God's mighty throne, along with Trenton Barnes. Nicholas, Marvin Cage, Helen Geddes, Jermaine Cryer, Wayne, Barney, that's Scott Woodall's new hiking buddy, amen, and Mission, amen. I just thank God for Barney. I thank God for using Scott. I see something in the spirit. Barney's going to fall in love with Jesus. He's going to get healed from cancer. And he's going to catch on fire and be a good friend to Scott Woodall. I see it happening. I see God's purpose in this situation. Let's keep Barney lifted up in our prayers, along with Hattie and Rebecca Coleman, Leah Henderson, my girl Charlie, amen, M Mugoda Stanley from Facebook. You can follow him, amen. I just on fire looking for the lost. Amen. Keep him and his family and ministry lifted up in our prayers, along with Trina. And Crystal is in need of deliverance. Amen. Let's pray for Crystal and that the Lord would deliver her whole and complete. Light her on fire that she will be that warrior for Christ going into these last days. Amen. Let's make sure I'm writing on everything now. This prayer lets them go out of control. Amen. I think we're okay. Amen, amen, and amen. Who is ready for a word? Hallelujah. Turn hey, your Bible. Uh, hold on, Rip. Uh oh I got to say something about uh, Scott and Barney. You know, I love it because what did Jesus say? Who are my brothers and sisters and mothers? Amen. Who my real family? Amen. Amen. I've had family. Y'all know my testimony from birth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That I don't even know. Just finding now the adoptive family. I mean, that was about as abusive as it could get, you know. And so people say, people say, blood is thicker than water. You're supposed to stick with your family. Hmm. I don't know if my family's on the same road I'm on. I'm on my way to heaven and looking for souls all the way up. I don't see none Amen. of my family on that road, except for maybe Karen, my sweet sister. Amen. And so Amen. I say spirit is thicker than blood then. Those that are doing the will of my father, that's my family. Y'all my family. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Scott Woodall, my family. That's my brother mm. from another mother, Tim. Amen. T Tim is my family. Laura Lai is my family. Okay? Tone and uh, Bert are calling me uncle. I'm calling him nephew. We real family. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I Amen, say spirits thicker and, and than just, blood. Go ahead, Amen. Tim. And like you said, Rev, you know, the Lord is... You know, I, 
seems to me like it in my heart, <laughs> like the Lord's working on Barney. And who's to say that Barney won't become another brother in Christ for Scott? I know he will. I know he will. Amen. Amen. I know that's God's purpose. And I'm praying that God's will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Amen. I see the setup. This is Barney's divine moment. And I pray he answers the call. Amen. Amen. Now, y'all wondering why they were booing up front when we started the podcast. Well, see, Tony, uh, 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 SB, Tone, <laughs> the, Berea, the, Berea, the Berean that we had as our special guest yesterday, and Bert and his kids were out in the project meeting and greeting people and handing out flyers, letting them know about this end of the month. So we see some church folks up in there. I'm ashamed to even say what denomination, you know, we don't get into that. Put it this way. It was a lost denomination. <laughs> so, so I'm looking at the homie. He got a Bible this thin. Now it's about the size of a Bible, but it looked like he got 10 pages. I go, what's that in your hand? He said, that's my Bible. <laughs> but He's challenging us. I'm trying to hand him a flyer. Well, since y'all out here ministering here, now, why don't you come out to this event? Because we need, we need warriors out here to pray for folks, to help feed these folks, to serve and love on these folks. Why don't you join us? They won't even take the flyer. Hmm. And you know what this... Oh, I was about to call him something. You know what this <laughs> you know what this dude says to me did I'm you know that. that repentance is not in the bible no do, nowhere hey, does it say that we I have to repent of our sins <laughs> i'm looking at him i said oh y'all babies huh <laughs> y'all babies in there well, what uh -huh. you doing what you doing in the project trying to hang with the warriors Handing out, well, I don't even know what you're handing out. You're knocking on people's doors to do what? To fill uh, your church? We trying to fill heaven, babe. What you doing out there, little babies? With your little diapers on, your little church clothes on. You don't even fit in to the project. You don't even look like you belong in the project. But you in here, Karen, what you say is the Bible. But it looked uh, like you missing too many books. It's 66. That's what, Anton, <laughs> that's what Antonio told him. You know there's 66 in the clip in that uh, Bible. Uh, Yours look a little thin. Talking about there ain't no repentance in the Bible. I said, what was the first thing that came out of John the Baptist's mouth when he started his ministry? And I, 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 No, he didn't say, I, 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 I. he said, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is near. What's the first thing Jesus said when he started his ministry? Uh, blah, blah, blah. No, he didn't say, ah, blah, blah, blah. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So you got these. I almost called him something, Tim. I'm trying to be nice. Amen. Well, and amen. It's like I told you also, Acts chapter 3. Repent for that so that your sins will be blotted out. That's right. Did I lose you, Tim? Or oh, I'll there you are. If, if, no, no, I'm still here. I'm okay. Still here. Or if they really want to go that route, you know, look at the uh, man on the cross. And yeah. He just told him, "This day, you too will be be with me in with paradise." Me. So Bert um, said, "I bet y'all some of them folks that believe in once saved, always saved." And they said, "Yeah, we do." And we're like, oh, God, we got to get away, baby. Baby. Or, but you're on a battlefield. I, 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 well, you know what, Rev? You just had to light me up on this one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what about the Samaritan at the well? Well, go forward and sin no more. That's right. That's right. What about uh, what about the uh, woman that they were about to stone? Yeah, that was caught in the act, supposedly uh -huh. accused <laughs> of being uh caught in the act of adultery. They didn't bring the man. 
if you was truly caught in adultery, who was she being <laughs> an adulterer with? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Cause, Amen. But, yeah, it's throughout Scripture. Amen. Even in the Old Testament, repent, O Israel, of thy sins. Turn back to God. Throw ashes over your head. Put on that burlap. Get on that ground and repent of your sins so God can forgive us. Well, look at King David. He yeah. He repent for his sin. Yeah. Of what he did. And God still punished him, but, you know, the Lord forgave him. Well, here's the thing, you know? Tim. That Bible was so thin, I, I guess they cut repentance out of the day Bible. Uh-huh. It might not be in your Bible, but repentance is in repentance is in the rest of our Bibles. Amen. What do you think we've been studying in the book of Revelation? If you haven't uh, repented of your sins, do it now oh, because we're at the end of human history. <laughs> all these seals and all these trumpets and they yes. repented not. Uh-huh. Repentance <laughs> ain't in the Bible. I mean, come on now. Turn your Bibles. Come on with us. We're going to read the Bible for real. Now, this is my Bible. That's how thick my Bible is. Amen. You see that thickness on that bad boy? His was about like, that's a little fat. He was carrying something about that thin. Can you see that? And I'm like, what you got in your hand? That's my Bible. Bible, you got a little baby. Oh, you can't carry the sword. You in training. You ain't got the real sword. <laughs> you got to carry a piece of a sword. What, what are you people doing out there? You in the project, and you only bring a piece of a sword. These people no, need it all. They're carrying a piece of the sword. <laughs> they may be carrying the string that ties the sheath to the belt. That's about it. Yeah. And what I'm seeing is you trying to fill a building. You trying to recruit more people for your quote unquote church. We're trying to fill heaven. You need all this and everything in it. And those are some beautiful people down there in them project. What you bringing them? What you trying to do to these people? Well, and you, you see know, what I'm saying? That's a dangerous thing for them to do. You know, it's like we've said. They can sense the real. And right. If you ain't real. No, oh, yeah. you're trying to play them or lie to them, they're going to tear you apart. A lady. They're going to tear you down and everything else. That's right. A lady complimented us. Now, Bert came straight from work. He works manufacturing doors. So he got sawdust and glue and all kind of stuff all over him. He just came straight from work. Tony was an electrician and working on a job site, digging ditches to lay that 480 or 460 lines in the ground into a new development. He, he, he just got his work clothes on. Me, I didn't dress up. I put some shorts, some flip-flops, and a Jesus shirt on. You know how we roll. And the lady looked at us as we're handing her the flyers. She said, you know what? Y'all real. I appreciate how you come here in these projects and you just being you. And Bert's looking at himself like, being me, <laughs> that's all I can be. Ain't nothing fake Amen. about me. Ain't nothing fake about the commission. Ain't nothing fake about what we do. It's not what you wear. It's what's in here in the chest, in the heart. You see? But these are the fools. They walking through there. You can tell they don't belong in the project. You can tell. But what are you bringing into the ears and hearts of the people who live in the project? That was the crime. You're going to tell them lies, what you don't know. There's a lot of church folk living in the project. You come in there spitting that once saved, always saved, and there's no uh, repentance on the Bible. These people might grab a broom and chase you out of the project. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. They know you don't belong, and they know you're spitting lies. Amen. 
Just read your word, read your word, read your word. That's why you'll know who it is knocking on the doors of your home trying to share God's word and what they bring in. Amen. So we're, we stop at verse 10, Tim. But I'm going to back up to 7 because 7 is one of my favorites in this chapter here of 22. Now, don't forget, 19, 20, 21, and 22 really didn't need numbers. This is all just one big scene at the end of human history as evil is wiped off this planet. We're removed from this planet into our glorious, I said, glorious new home, amen, behind those pearly gates. And uh, the Lord destroys this earth and creates a new one and a new heaven. And we live with him and each other for eternity. But look what verse, we're going to go back to verse 7 and then come on into 10. We're in Revelation chapter 2, and I'm reading out of the new living translation for your ease. Amen. Amen. Verse 7 says, Look, this is in red, y'all. Look, I am coming soon. You're looking at me like, why are you yelling? Because there's an exclamation mark in my Bible. Look, I'm coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. Verse 8 says, I, John, and the one who heard and saw all these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them, showed them to me. But he said, no. He said, no, don't worship me. I am a servant of God just like you and your brothers, the prophet, as well as all who obey. What is written in this book? Worship only God. Isn't that powerful? All right, today's lesson, verse 10. Then he instructed me, do not seal up the prophetic words in this book, for the time is near. Now watch 11. 11 gets hard to the heart. Let the one who is doing harm continue. To do harm. Mm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Uh-oh. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Oh, come on, y'all. <laughs> Did you hear it? Let the one who is doing harm Amen. continue to do harm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Let's go to this study guide here. Amen? Amen. See what they got on this. Okay. The angel... I'm going to back up to uh, 10 where we started in 11. Amen. The angel tells John what to do after his vision is over. Instead of sealing up what he has written, as Daniel was commanded to do, you'll find that in Daniel 12, 4 through 12, the book is to be left open so that all can read and understand. Daniel's message was sealed because it was not a message for Daniel's time, but the book of Revelation was a message for John's time, and it is relevant today. As Christ's return gets closer, there is a greater polarization between God's followers and Satan's followers. We must read the book of Revelation, hear its message, and be prepared for Christ's imminent return. And I'm just going to ask you. I'll even ask you, Tim. You're the only one I can hear right now. They can write their comments uh, <laughs> uh, underneath the podcast. Amen. Uh, Amen. 
Was this difficult to understand, this book of Revelation? Because no, we're at the end now. it's straightforward. No, no, it's straightforward. Do this or guess what? You signed uh, the book for the eternal barbecue. Yeah. It's as easy as pie. It's as easy as amen. anything we've ever and, brought in the podcast. And amen. The Lord said the, amen. And the Lord sent those love letters, Rev, as a guideline of as, what we need to do. That's right. That's right. Now, we're going to answer questions. We may finish this chapter today, which would finish our study of the book of Revelation, but we're not done. We're going to talk about the highlights. We're going to chat it out. If you've got questions, just type them in in the comments. Or if you've got comments, type them in and we'll read it, okay, about this book of Revelation. Amen? So we're not exactly done. But where... Uh, we're at now is let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. What does that mean? Their hearts are fixed in my spirit. They've heard the gospel. They refuse to repent. They're going to do life their way. They may have in their heart, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in this Bible. It's a fairy tale. That's okay. What, is, what does the Bible say about that attitude? Let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. That's what you want to do. Go ahead. You may, you may, you may think it's a fairy tale now, but then you're going to find out it's a reality show. Real quick here, you're going to find out. Uh -huh. It said, let the one who is vile. What is vile? That's just nasty. <laughs> they just nasty. Amen. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. There should be a but there, <laughs> I'm thinking. But it continues. Let the one who is righteous continue to be righteous. That's us, y'all. Amen? And let the one who is holy continue to be holy. In other words, you here, stay here. If you ain't, hey, you won't stay out there. They'll be it held to pay. Wonder. Said that is he pretty much saying <laughs> I ain't trying no more. I'm done. You want to do what you're do what you're doing. You do what you're what you're doing. This sounds like a hand washing, but from God, uh -huh. I'm washing my hands of you. I have done everything I can to touch your heart, to bless your life, to bless your Amen. family, to reveal myself to you. But you refuse to acknowledge me. You refuse to thank me. You refuse to let me into your heart. See, God's patience. I thank God for his patience. I wouldn't have made it in if he hadn't waited. Amen. Thank God for his patience. But his patience runs out. He's eternal. His kingdom, his kingdom is eternal. His love is eternal. His mercy is eternal. His grace is eternal. His power is eternal. Everything about God is eternal except his patience. I know that. Amen. Oh, there, there's coming a day real soon. All right. Done all I can do. His patience ran out with Pharaoh. His patience ran out with Noah. Yeah. And he flooded the world. He <laughs> sure did. His patience ran out with Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. But now these nuts down here on this earth want to test his patience. They want to test and see if there really is a God. I'm going a, I'm to a push the envelope. I'm going to do as much evil as I possibly can while I can. While I'm alive, I'm going to do vile things. I'm going to do harm to everyone I possibly can. And God says, okay, let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously. Let the one who is holy continue to be holy. Let's see what we've got here in the study guide. Amen. Well, Rev, I just I also Nothing. want to say one thing to that. Oh, I want to say, so, oh, want go, to say go something ahead. to that. I'm going to steal a line from a movie. And that line is, the bill always comes due. Amen. Doesn't. 
Yeah. You're going to have to pay eventually. Eventually, it's coming. You might have sat here for four hours sipping on coffee and eating cheesecake, but that bill's coming. Amen. <laughs> you're not going to get up without paying that bill unless you're in your Amen. kitchen. <laughs> Amen. And it didn't come without cost. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Verse 12. This is in red. Now Jesus is speaking at the end of the book of Revelation to show the seriousness, the authenticity of everything that we've read. And he's putting in his heart into this too. What does he say? Look, I am coming soon. Bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. What reward is he bringing with him? We know he got fire in his eye. <laughs> he got a sword coming out of his mouth. He got an army behind him. But he also has the new Jerusalem coming down for us to be raptured Amen. up too. Amen. That's our reward for the righteous and the holy. But watch this. He said, Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people. He's also bringing the wrath of God. <laughs> oh, you act like he can't multitask. You can't. What makes you think your God can? Why you got to come four or five times <laughs> when there's only a second coming? He going to do it Amen. all in this second coming, yo. Amen? No. I think Lorelai is sending me. I don't think they can see it on the phone. And if I bring the phone up, amen, amen. they're not going. It's going to interfere with the board, I think. That's why I have such a long cord. Let me see if I can show. Ooh, look at that one. I don't even know if I should let them see this, Tim. It said, Jesus oh, said you. to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. John 14 and 6, and got a warrior with his sword on his knees. See, I don't, I don't think, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute with the light. I don't know if you can see that. This is Lorelai's new clothing line, and it's called Set Free, her line. And she's going to bless. This ministry, trackside, she's a part of the commission. Don't think she ain't. She's always out at our event. Amen. <laughs> I don't know if I can get the proper light. See, I can't. Amen. Good. I need to see what I want first. Amen. Amen. And then she's got <laughs> this one. Okay. Yeah. It's just not working with the phone and the lighting and all of that. And that's okay, because I'm going to print it out for you guys when I decide I can share it with you. Now, if you reach out to Lorelai and go around me, see, you don't need me. Lorelai on Facebook. Just hit her up, and uh, she'll make it happen for you. But see, then you can see right now. If you hit her up right now, you ain't got to worry about me getting in the way, but I'm in the way right now. Cause I'm checking out this new line of clothes. Cause I'm gonna be, <laughs> I'm gonna be the first out there when we hit this stage out there in the uh, uh, at the end of the month at the uh, project. Yeah, I'm gonna bring a message on my chest and another message in my heart as I give my testimony. Amen. But look what the Lord says here in verse twelve. Look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according. To their deeds. He said all people. Oh you act like he didn't say all people. Why you sit there? <laughs> all people. Watch. Look I am coming soon. Bring him my reward with me. To repay all people. According to their deeds. We get that new Jerusalem. We get to rise. Up in the sky. Amen. But he got fire in his eyes, a sword in his mouth to destroy the nations and everything evil on this planet. He's bringing the full wrath of God with him too and an army of angels behind him. 
all people will get served. Oh, he finna serve. <laughs> okay. Which side are you on? <laughs> it will depend on what you get served. Amen. Whether you will rise. Amen. Verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Why would Jesus go there right now? Because this is the end of human history on this earth as we know it. The history books close here. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. You got to start a, start a new history class called Eternity with Jesus. Amen. Because you ain't going to be writing from that pen of hell. Pit of hell. Ain't no paper in hell. If there was paper, it would just catch on fire. Ain't no pencils in hell. You ain't writing no more. You just going to suffer and burn for forever. God doesn't want that. I don't want that. Nobody in this ministry wants that. Why do you think we praying so hard for folks? Why do you think we minister? In a podcast every day, trying to get people to war up and catch a hold of Jesus and never let him go. Make it into heaven. Will you be there? Is the question. Amen. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega. He was in the beginning. John 1 and 1, in the beginning. Genesis 1, in the beginning. They're talking about the same beginning. Jesus was there in the beginning. Nothing wasn't cre nothing was created that wasn't created through Jesus. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the first and the last. I'm the beginning and the end. And here he is at the end of human history, talking to his people. Another love letter. What does Tim always say that Jesus asks us? Did you get my letter? <laughs> Amen. Blessed are those who wash their robes. That's verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes. Now, you know, we just as filthy as we can be, but under the blood of Jesus, we are made pure and holy. That's what you're talking about. Blessed are they who wash their robes in the blood of Jesus. Amen. They will Amen. be permitted to enter through the gates of the city, thank you, Jesus, and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Ooh, I bet that fruit tastes so good. What do you think, Tim? Amen. Amen. Oh, I know it does. But watch verse 15. Outside of the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshippers, and all who love to live a lie. You fakers. You came up in this church pretending to be Christian. You're a lie is what you are. And your life is a lie. And your heart is a lie. You prophesy. You testify. You got up in that pulpit and you taught false teachings, false preaching. You liars. And you loved to live that life. Because in your life, you was rich, so you thought. But you were the walking dead, and we'll get to the uh, study guide on this. Matter of fact, let's go there right now and catch up. Amen. <coughs> those who wash their robes are those who seek to purify themselves from a sinful way of life. They strive daily to remain faithful and ready for Christ's return. Okay? Now, in uh, for 14, uh, blessed are those who wash their robes. Uh, um, they will be, be permitted to enter in to the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Let's go to study guide. In Eden, Adam and Eve were barred from any access to the tree of life because of their sin. In the new earth, God's people will eat from the tree of life because their sins have been removed by Christ's death and resurrection. By the blood of Jesus, we are cleaned. Amen? Watch this. Amen. Wash white as snow we are. Watch this. 
Those who eat the fruit of this tree will live forever. If Jesus has forgiven your sins, you will have the right to eat from this tree. Amen? We have another one here. Jesus will exclude from the holy city those who love to live a lie. You love living a lie, you fakers, false flaggers, you gummy bear Christians. Call yourself a Christian, and you're on your way to hell. You know, Tim, in my testimony, the Lord had spoke to me when he got me out of hell, and he said, now you make sure your mission from here on out for the rest of your life is to tell my people that hell is real. Tell everybody who will listen. But tell them they don't have to go. Tell them what I did on that cross, that they wouldn't have to go. Especially Amen. my churches. Now I went back to the Lord a couple of weeks later, and I said, Lord, on my mission, you told me, tell the world. That part I understand. You want me to tell the world hell is real because they may not even know there is a hell. But why on your green earth would I walk into a church and tell them about hell? Amen. I'm thinking in my mind, they ought to know, right? They do church. They got a Bible. And he says, son, you're just naive. A lot of my churches don't even believe there is a hell. And 50%, 50, listen to me, 50% of those sitting on the pews every Sunday are on their way to hell. Make sure you get in my churches. That's been the hardest part of this ministry, Tim, getting in the churches. They won't let you in. They won't let me in because I don't have a prosperity message. I'm not trying to tell them that God's going to buy everybody in the congregation a Learjet. They don't want this message that I bring. They don't teach heaven, hell, judgment day. They don't teach how to live for Christ to make it into heaven. The epistles that uh, uh, God gave us, the walk, how to live for him, they're not teaching that. And I might offend the tithers. Oh, God forbid I offend the tithers. They will not let me in. Yet they think they're safe and secure behind those walls. They think their location gets them into heaven. It's the relationship in the heart that gets us into heaven. Jesus said, Amen. depart from me. I don't know you. If you're not in relationship with him, if you're not one with this word, one with this Holy Spirit, living in the spirit of God. If he's not dwelling in you, it's very easy to say, I don't know you. But if he's living in you, you're one with this word, one with this spirit. He's living in you. How can he tell you? I don't know you. So it's not sitting in the pew that gets you in the head. <laughs> Location Amen. has nothing to do with where you're going. Amen. And they've been faking it out. And they've been packing these monster churches, these mega churches. And yet the Lord told me 50% of them that are there every Sunday, that means a perfect attendance record, are on their way to hell. Mm, mm, mm. What are they doing up in there? Amen? Nothing good, that's for sure. And so the study guy says, Jesus will exclude from the holy city those who love to live a lie. These are people whose lives have gone so wrong that they resemble Satan, who deceived the whole world. They are hypocrites, trying to live one way while pretending to believe another. They're talking about church folks. This was meant for church folks. Y'all act like I'm picking on church folks and mega churches. I don't give a... No, we are not. That's what the scripture means. Even the study guide knows it. Listen to the study guide. You don't have to believe me. They are hypocrites, trying to live one way while pretending to believe another. They are like the Nicolotians. Do you remember the Nicolotians? Who are among the believers, but compromised their faith. 
in order to also include worship of the Roman emperor and also weird sexual activity that they shouldn't have been involved in in that city. Amen? Uh, it says here uh, that include worship of the Roman emperor. John records Jesus' statement that Satan is the father of lies. Today we see leaders who twist the truth to serve their purposes. Amen? Many people have lost the ability to distinguish what's true from what they wish was true. And that's what these false preachers and false teachers are doing. They're trying to appeal to your ears of what you wish you could have from God instead of giving you this powerful, life-saving, life-changing life rearranging true gospel of Jesus Christ that you will be all that God had created you to be. You see, dishonest people soon begin to believe the lies they construct about themselves. Then they lose the ability to tell the difference between truth and lies. Haven't we had podcasts, sermons, where I've asked, can you tell the difference between a lie and the truth? Amen? If they're preaching the truth, they can't hold 35,000 people on a Sunday because 35,000 people, people ain't going to come to hear God's truth. They're going to come with itchy ears. Tell me what God's going to give me. Let's sing some songs. Maybe I can throw a few nickels in the bucket and God will forgive me of my sins. They don't even have a relationship with God. Ain't trying to have a relationship with God. They're just trying to quench that guilty feeling they feel in their soul as the Holy Spirit's tugging on them because they ain't living right. They're not going to church to find Jesus. They're going to church to network, to expand their businesses, to find a rich boy to marry who will take care of me, to find a wife. Oh, they're going to church. But they're not looking for Jesus, and Jesus ain't up in there anyway because there's no power. If there was power in there, why'd they come to us to get healed, baptized, delivered, and set free? <laughs> Where's the power? If there's no power in that megachurch, then there's no Jesus in that megachurch. You find me a megachurch that got the power to cast out demons, raise the dead, give blind, give sight to the blind. That's got the cripple walking. Amen. Deliverance coming forth. Drugs gone. Alcohol gone. Porn gone. All that stuff. You show me one. If there is one out there, type it in the comments. I want to know. Amen. I want to know. Because I don't see that. I see deliverance ministries. You're lucky if you got 50 people in the deliverance ministry because the deliverance ministry, ministry preaches the true word of Christ. And the true gospel will create change by the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? Are you with me? People don't want to change. They just want God to change for them. They want God to bless their men. I'm not going to change for God. But let's pray that God will bless what I'm trying to do living my way. <laughs> it's silly. Let's get back into the study guide here. Then they lose the ability to tell the difference between truth and lies. By believing your own lies, you deceive yourself. You alienate yourself from God. And you lose credibility in all your relationships. In the long run, honesty wins out. Amen? Hey, Tim, mm -hmm. we are out of time. We didn't finish. We'll finish this tomorrow. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we yeah. got to verse 15. Amen? Amen? But I know Tim's on fire and he got something he want to share. So where we got our last piece of scripture here is blessed. This verse 14 and 15. Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit 
from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs. Bow, wow, wow, yippee, oh, yippee, yay. The sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. Think about that. Amen. Think about that. Amen. Those that would twist this word, twist the word of God to prosper from it, to be blessed, <laughs> to tell you a lie that it means this when it doesn't, so that you'll be satisfied, that they can scratch your little itchy ears. You see, this is a crime. Why are we preaching? Why should anybody want to get up in that pulpit? Who should want to get up in that pulpit? Only those warriors for Christ who are preaching for souls. If it ain't about souls, you shouldn't be in the pulpit. Amen, bro. That's what the Lord has shared with me from his heart, and that is my heart. That it's not a playpen, the pulpit. Get out of there. Go play in the sandbox at the park if you want to play. Don't play in the pulpit. And you will be accountable for every soul that ends up in that pit of hell. If you dare to climb up in that pulpit, you better be bringing this word. You better bring it from the heart. And it better be activated by love. A love for God. A love for this word. A love for his people and our love for the work of getting them into heaven. Either you're going to be that shepherd or you're not. Are you going to be that shepherd after God's own heart? Or are you going to try to change God's heart and have him bless your mess? Mm. It's not a game. And we've read the entire book of Revelation, and we're at the end where Jesus is bringing it home to him. Amen? Amen. And we'll finish it off tomorrow. But he said, I'm coming and I'm bringing my reward for all. Think about that. Everybody left alive when he returned got a gift coming from Jesus himself. Either you're going to catch that fire or you're going to catch that sword and feel the full wrath of God against the evil. Or you're going to rise. Amen. <laughs> We will rise. Amen. All right, Amen. Tim. Take it. Take All it right. from here. Amen. I, 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 it's like I told you earlier, Rev. You know, I want to confess. Mm. Uh, you know, and I, uh, you know, I thank the Lord for showing it to me. Let me just start by saying, I don't know if y'all know who Phil Collins is. Phil He's Collins. He was with Phil the, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the group. I, I remember Phil Collins. Yeah, Pink Floyd and all that. Anyway, um, but there's a song that he has, and it's called um, Just Another Day in Paradise. And it's a, it's a, it, it really touched me. The Lord made me see my wrong in this. And, you know, all the times that the Lord helped me, when yeah. I, I, you know, he didn't have to. When people strangers walked up to me and handed me something or offered to help my family yeah. in any which way, shape, or form. And, and I accepted it without question. But then, how dare me, and this is before I came to know the Lord, how dare I turn my back on a fellow brother or sister in Christ when they needed help, when I saw them in the streets or you know, asking for assistance. Maybe it was for just something to eat or, you know, <laughs> a blanket to keep them warm. Yeah. How dare I? How dare I? You know, turn my back on them, my, one of Jesus' children, one of my fellow brothers and sisters, yeah. when the Lord didn't turn his back on me. And, and I just asked the Lord for forgiveness for that. I, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that, Lord. I apologize. I. You know, I was stupid. I was yeah. arrogant. I was, you know, insensitive to, you know, those around me that were suffering when I was suffering and you helped me. Yeah. You know, and, and 
he really hit me home with me. I, I was in tears the other night, Rev. Yeah. Thinking about it. Wow. You know, because I mean, it really hurt. You know, knowing that what happened to that person when I turned my back on them, it didn't help them. Maybe giving them a dollar or a sandwich or a blanket or, you know, just talking to them. I, I know we say this a lot, but I mean, every time that the Lord puts it on me, I've got to say something because it's it's there. I haven't, I, you know, it's like I forgot about it, but the Lord needs me to remember so I can let it go and ask for my forgiveness for it. Yeah. You know, and I thank him for that. I do. I truly thank him for that, but I'm also sorry for all those that I turned my back on. You know, I could have been there for them. I think we could all go down that road with you and ask the Lord forgive, to forgive us as you were confessing. I thought of my baby, Angelina, when she was about eight or nine, we'd be sneaking in the donut shop early in the morning. Michelle, her mama, had told us, don't stop in no donut shop, don't stop in no stores, straight to school, no snack. Well, here we are sneaking into a donut shop. And she would get her donut holes, she would get her sprinkles, she would get a hot cocoa, and one of them uh, Martinelli's apple juice, you know, the little round glass bottle. She would load up her backpack and more than likely get caught. We'd get busted either at the school or <laughs> by her mom because she didn't need it all to all. But there'd be this lady out front in a wheelchair. Now, I didn't have a lot of money. So to get this little girl, the thing she wanted was sacrifice to me. I'm thinking in my heart, I've already sacrificed. My life is a sacrifice, you know, just being here for her and her brother Gilbert. But Angie would say, Eddie, can I have a dollar? Sure, girl. And I'd give her the dollar, and while they're putting her order together, she'd walk back outside and give that lady in the wheelchair a dollar who would thank her. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, I walk right past them. You can't see nobody sitting in a wheelchair? You that blind? <laughs> you need glasses, right? She saw them, but I'm thinking about her. So I missed Yeah, are you with me? I'm with you. Why didn't I see it? Here's an eight, nine-year-old child, <laughs> little baby girl who can see. But my focus is elsewhere. I'm with you on that, Tim. And I have to Amen. think, try, now you got me wondering how many times did I do that? Just, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us all who heard that Amen. confession because I'm sure we've all been there. You know what I mean? I, That's you know, real. It's like, I, it's like I said, you know, I, I was in tears praying to God, you know, for yeah. how many souls that I turned away and what happened to them? Did, did, did they find yeah. help? Did the Lord send them extra help? You know, did, did that, you know, that $5 that I didn't give them yeah. cause them to lose their life? Did, did, I mean, there's right. just so much that plays into it. You know? I know. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, and, 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 I, I, like I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Hey, hang on one second. Well, I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, think about that. That person asking you for money, you're thinking maybe this is what they do all day, every day. And in some cases, you might be right. But what if it's somebody who's never asked back. Um, for money? You know, I'm I'm back, Let me say you know. this, Tim. Mm -hmm. I was saying that that person that you didn't give the five bucks to, we might think in our heart that because they got their hand out and they're asking for money, this is what they do all day, every day. What about the possibility that that person who's asking for money now, they've never asked anybody for anything and they haven't eaten in a couple of weeks. And they're dying. Amen. 
And they said, you know what? If there is a God, I'm about to die. Catch me. But I need something to eat. I'm going to do something I've never done. I'm going to ask somebody for something so I can eat. Because if I don't eat now, I'm going to die. He's right. We don't know these people. We don't know the situations Amen. they're and, in. And that's the other thing, Rev. You know, how dare I assume yeah. that somebody is lying to me? Who cares mm -hmm. if they are? I mean, you know, and, and I wish I would have seen this sooner, and I'm thankful that the Lord has changed my heart and made me see things differently. But you know what? They print more money every day. Yeah. You know? I, they good cares, at that. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, and, 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 you know, I mean, who cares if, so what, if that one person that I gave $5 to is a faker and they just go and, uh, you know, they they have a job, they make money, they just, you know, messing around and, you know, trying to get extra, so what? Who cares? Right, Because right. I guarantee you that next one, they're not going to be. Right. They're going to be serious. They really do need the help, and I know. I've heard people say, well, you just can't trust people now. Who cares? Trust God. Right. And trust him. The Bible says if they ask, give. Now, you might mm -hmm. think, well, I know they're going to go get hired. They're going to go drink. But the Bible says if they ask, give. Now, think Amen. about this. If you give them some money and they go buy drugs or they buy alcohol, did you just save some old lady from getting hit? with a bottle on top of her head and rob so that they could drink or go get high? Exactly, Rev. Exactly. Just asking. You know what I'm saying? We don't want them to go get drunk or get high, but we don't want anybody getting hurt in their path as they're trying to get drunk or get high. You see? The Bible doesn't say, well, if they're going to get drunk or get high, don't give them any money. It says if they ask, give. You see? And right. God honors our giving irregardless of what the receiver does with it. Amen? Amen, Amen Rip. And, and you're absolutely correct. It's not our business what they do. The Lord will convict them. I mean, one way right. or the other, they're going to be convicted. Right. You know, uh, in their spirit, you know, or <laughs> they're going to be convicted. And that's a funny word, convicted, mm -hmm. you know, because Jesus is going to convict us during judgment day. Now, either yeah. he can convict your spirit mm -hmm. or he can convict you to hell, you know. Right. right. You choose, but, you know. Yeah. That's I'm, how we started off today. He simply says, amen. let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. Huh? Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. See, we're at the end now. Mm -hmm. It's like it's too late to change. Either you're with me or you ain't. If you're doing Amen. wrong, just keep doing wrong. Because here I am. Amen. I'm coming soon. And I know your Amen. hearts. I know your lives. I know your thoughts. And as long as I've tried, as many people I've sent into your life, you don't want to change? Okay. If you're doing wrong, keep on doing wrong. If you're doing vile, keep on doing vile. But Amen. there's no but there. No. You know, if you're doing righteous, keep on doing righteous. If you're living holy, keep on living holy. Because here I come. Amen. <laughs> and with me, I'm bringing my reward for all people. So he's bringing punishment and wrath of God eternal punishment with him as well as heavenly reward. Well, amen, Rev. And, you know, on top of that, by me saying, you know, well, I can't trust whether or not that person's going to buy alcohol or buy drugs or, you know, go to the strip club. I've done what Jesus told me not to do. I just judge that person. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. Good point. Yeah, you don't deserve anything. <laughs> uh uh. I'm not giving you any of my hard-earned money. You young enough to get a job. <laughs> Amen. You know what I mean? Amen, Rev. Yeah. You know, but like I said, you know, I I wanted to 
ask the Lord for forgiveness on that because there's yeah. so many times I've turned my back on those in need. Yeah. You know, when the Lord never did to me, he always made sure that somebody was mm. there for me. Yeah. And how dare I do the same, you right. know? Well, I... And that's why I said, Lord, throw them in front of me. Yeah, you yeah. You know, I've got, you know, throw them in my path. Yeah. You know, come on. Amen. We'll, we'll, do the, we'll do it together, Lord. It's all good. Thank you, Jesus. You know? Yeah. Because I, I don't want to be that person anymore, Rev. I don't want to stop somebody from finding God like that. Right, right. You know, letting them know that, hey, Jesus does love you. Yeah. You know? He always has. He's always been here for you. Yep. And we got you a know? lot of work to do in these last days. So we need to turn up the heat. We need to turn up that fury wherever we can see lost. And see, as these st seals start to break, there's going to be more and more and more homeless. And this economy we're in right now, there's families hitting the street. They can't hang. Amen. They were barely hanging a couple of years ago. Now they're in the street. They can't hang. And those that are in the mid class, you see, that are slowly being wiped out, well, quickly being wiped out, they had a little cushion. That cushion's gone now, which is inflation. So they're just a check away, if not already hitting these streets. And see, Amen, they're not done yet worldwide. They're not done. Pretty soon there'll be no middle class. There is going to be a whole lot more families on the street. We don't dare judge. We don't know how they got there. We were praying for a young man. Last Sunday, you saw it on the uh, Facebook Live video. This young man lost two kids. five months. Well, one was five months old. I don't know how he lost him. But in his heart, he has nothing to live for, and he's out in the streets, and Bert said he's in places he ain't supposed to be. And we prayed for him. Amen? We don't know Amen. what's driving them to the streets, what loss they've suffered. But I'm telling you, these streets are about to get packed all over this country for sure. They're Amen. about to get packed. We don't want to judge. We just want to help. Amen? Amen. Yeah. But as these judgments break, shoo, look like every one of us is going to be homeless because we're running for our lives. Can't carry a house. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> Unless you got a mobile home, baby, you know? Mm -hmm. But with checkpoints and roads being shut down and the search for us, how far are you going to get in that? But then the question remains that we've always asked. How much are you willing to give up for Christ? For your walk, for your faith, for your Lord and Savior who gave everything for you. How much are you willing to give up? Will you run with a backpack from a big fine home? <laughs> You might have four cars in the garage, but there ain't no roads to drive them down to help you with your escape. You got to run to the hills. Are you willing to leave it all behind and run for the Lord? What's in this world worth going to hell for? In your possessions, <laughs> in your portfolio, what's worth burning in hell for? The other side of the coin is this body. What you hanging on to it for? It can't enter heaven. If you're here, when he returns, when you rise, this body will turn into a glorified body. This sinful body can't enter heaven. So you're going to lose this body anyway. What you hanging on to life for? Jesus said, those who hang on to their life will lose their lives. Those who give their lives for me 
will live forever with me. Are you with me? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this podcast today, this word, this powerful, life-saving, life-changing, life-rearranging word that you've given us. Just bury it in our hearts, Lord, with like barbed wire that it may stick and remain in our hearts all the way up through those pearly gates in Jesus' precious and mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Some of those that you've drawn here, Father, are sick, diseased, got diagnosed with something in their bodies. Oh, Lord, heal each and every one of them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. A lot that you've drawn here, Lord, are in bondage. Drugs, alcohol, pills, porn, whatever. By your power, Lord. Every yoke broken, every stronghold torn down, every chain ripped off. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some of them are prisoners in their minds, hearts, souls, spirits, situations, Lord. Circumstances. Some that you've drawn here can't see a way out. They've been, they've been called schizophrenic or diagnosed with PTSD or anxiety or depression, Lord. So many things going on in their lives and minds. You promised in your word that this anointing is so strong that it would open up those prison doors and set the captives free. We declare freedom from depression right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Freedom from PTSD, anxiety, bipolar, schizoid, whatever. In Jesus' precious and mighty name. Some are in a very dark place, Lord. A very dark place. And don't want to come out, Lord. They've been hurt all their lives. And they've taken refuge in a dark place. But, Lord, you are the light of the world that men would not stumble. Lord Jesus, go in, scoop them up into your arms, bring them out of those dark places into a new life in you, lit up by you in Jesus' precious and mighty name. And the church said together, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hey, Tim, you want to take us home? I sure do. Can you do us all a favor? Just Have a, a wonderful day. Yeah. Have a blessed day in our Lord and Savior Jesus yeah. Christ. Have a marvelous, miraculous. Yes. Have a, just a happy and loving mm. day with friends, families, co-workers, yeah. strangers. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Unless you've already made other plans. Praise God. See you tomorrow.